All right, everyone. I'm here with Tim Williams from NanoThings. Um, super excited to have them as, you know, I don't think a brand new member of our ecosystem, but this is the first time I've been able to talk to you and anyone from NanoThings, Tim. So um, you guys, if anyone was at Helium House New York City last week, NanoThings did have a little display there. So maybe you got to go talk with them, but I'm just going to go over a few, you know, questions about what NanoThings is, what they do and exciting things you guys are up to with Helium. So Tim, Quickly, just give us a, you know, a little intro, yourself, your role, and just like how NanoThings was started. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Jacob. Really excited to be doing this with you. Uh, so my name is Tim Williams. I'm head of ecosystem development. Um, and yeah, so uh, a little bit on just to roll right into uh, how NanoThings was created. So a uh, little, little brief history. So we were founded in 2017. Uh, okay. I was... I founded the company with the purpose to digitize print media, which may sound totally, totally crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't we realize that. Literally trying to embed printed connected sensors into direct mailers and magazines for the purpose of, um, of tracking their open rates. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Totally wild application, right? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and so... You know, the, the, this background story is important in telling the story of nanothings and why the nanotag looks and, and is the way that it is, which we'll talk about more, I'm sure, later on. But basically, we, we dealt with a series of extreme challenges in trying to build that, out this application for the print media industry. And, the, and we had major cost constraints, major size constraints, had to deal with, had to have a sensor that was mechanically flexible and disposable. And... Uh, had lo ultra long range and could communicate over a public network. So we had basically every challenge that you could possibly think of in trying to develop this, you know, connected sensor for the print media industry. Um, yeah. That's why we developed the nanotag and really had to invent an entirely new type of sensor technology because we couldn't use anything off the shelf. Gotcha. So you keep saying nanotag and I know like I'm familiar with it. A lot of people who know about nano things are, but I mean, um, that's kind of your, your product. So what, what uh, challenges does your company solve like for its customers with the nanotag? Yeah, so first of all, I have one right here. So why don't I do Perfect. a little show and tell for those of you who awesome. do not know what a nanotag looks like. So this is it. Super small, super thin, mechanically flexible, no buttons anywhere, no antenna sticking out anywhere. All the circuitry is printed inside this teeny tiny little package. The way to activate the tag is you just tear this bottom tab off. As you can see, sort of that uh, indentation, you just tear along the perfor perforated line. That's what actually activates the tag. All the programming, everything else is done remotely um, through the Helium network, right? Very cool. uh, so the challenges that we solve are, are really, if we're talking about the LoRaWAN ecosystem in general and the types of sensor offerings um, that, that are available in the LoRa ecosystem, I'm sorry, I'm gonna disparage all the other sensor companies out there. <laughs> I apologize in advance, guys. but. Um, most other sensors are either too big, too expensive, not disposable, um, don't have enough features built in to support the whole range of applications out there. Um, and the nanotech solves all those challenges, right? It's the smallest connected sensor in the ecosystem. It's the lowest cost. I mean, we start, our pricing starts at 12 bucks. There's nothing that can come even close to that. Um, we're designed to be disposable by nature, but, but, but the Nanotech has a 50,000 transmission battery life, so you can you can use those transmissions however you want. Yeah. Um, so the tag can live for 25 years if you want to configure it that way. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. Really, really versatile and just solves a lot of other problems that these kind of big, bulky kind of, um, you know, jack of all trades type sensors don't really solve. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I don't know if you're disparaging all the other sensors as much as saying your value proposition there. So we're, we're okay. Um, I, I know yesterday I did have someone ask like just randomly, like is there pricing for like single nano tags that so you said around like $12 or something? So people can go, can they buy individual ones? I wasn't actually positive about that. So I wanted to ask. Yeah. You. Yeah. Good question. So nano things doesn't actually typically sell nano tags. We're the inventor of it. We're the owners of the IP. We're, we have a completely open license hardware model. So anyone could buy them, make them, modify them, augment them, right? That's that's our model. Um, yeah. Now you can go directly to our manufacturer Flex and order tags, um, get them directly at the manufacturer's cost. We are now distributing nano tags through CalChip um, and they're distributing at cost. So again, at this $12 range. Now they are selling samples. You can buy up to 10 samples at $25 a piece. 
Gotcha. And so it's a, we have a sample price where you can buy one to 10 at 25. Once you commercially launch, you automatically roll back into the lowest possible ecosystem cost of the tag, which currently sits at around 12 bucks. And that's our model. Perfect. We're not trying to yep. make any money off of hardware at all. All right. Very cool. I know that's going to answer some questions for people. So that's perfect. Um, kind of circling back to, I mean, you guys are using the Helium network. So what made you choose Helium? And, you know, were you looking at other technologies first and you kind of were like, all right, Helium solves these issues for us better than X technology? Yeah. So when we were first developing the nanotag, if we go way back again to the print media days, yeah. it was really about, okay, we need to find a, an RF protocol that will support, that will be publicly available all over the place, right? And the immediate go-to was cellular of some flavor, 4G, 3G, yeah. MBIOT, Catamon, you know, I can go on, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. we quickly ruled out all of the different flavors of cellular because they're too expensive. Uh, battery life was a huge issue. And because we needed to put a big bulky battery on the thing, it wouldn't put, fit on a piece of paper. So we yeah. quickly ruled out any type of cellular. We also quickly ruled out we couldn't do Bluetooth, we couldn't do Wi-Fi, range wasn't good enough, and we couldn't ask permission to, to you know, to log into everyone's home <laughs> Wi-Fi's, right? Um, yeah. Similar issues exist with Bluetooth, right? So it had to just be a publicly available network. So we were, we heard about this thing called LoRa, right? And we said, wow, this is really, really cool. Uh, we like the whole concept of LoRa. It enables really low cost devices, uh, really, re really long range, long battery life, et cetera. Um, and then we stumbled into Helium, who was building out this public network uh, on LoRa. We said, this is fantastic. Let's, let's, you know, let's try this thing out. And that's really kind of uh, how it came to be. Awesome. No, I love to hear that. And I think that reinforces a lot of what other people say too, you know, but it's always nice to kind of hear how companies kind of land on Helium and, you know, the challenges it solves for them. Um, so, you know, you have nanotags. I mean, you have a large number and I'll let you tell that in a second, like out in the world right now. Do you have that? Actually go with that. Let's start with that. Like, I know you, um, I can't, I can't even remember the number, Tim. So I'll let you say it, but you guys have a lot of nanotags like out there transmitting and things like that. What, what number is that right now? And kind of how does that, how does the future look? You know, how is that going to grow? Yeah. So despite what some of this, helium disparagers are saying um, <laughs> there are a lot of sensors on the helium network and nano things is probably in the you know top tier of, of those companies you know deploying sensors on the helium network um, to date we have over 80,000 nano tags on the helium network that's growing by between 20 and 25,000 tags per month and wow. that will be the growth rate for the foreseeable future as we are currently maxed out at manufacturing capacity, uh, but are working diligently to increase that capacity because we have a lot of demand. No, that's awesome to hear. I mean, that's that's a huge number and we love to see you know more devices, more usage of the network for sure. So do you have these tags like out, you know, they're in North America, I'm sure, but like, are they across the world right now in other countries and things like that? Yeah, so we support every LoRa region except for China. So okay. we have tags in Japan, Australia, all over the EU, all over South America, all over North America. The vast majority are in North America. Of course, we're a New York City based company. Um, yeah. But but, uh, but yeah, they're, they're compatible in all regions of the world. Gotcha. Are there any like major partners that you can, you know, that are using nano tags or, you know, planning to that you've been talks with or anything you can maybe name drop or anything like that, brag about a little bit? Yeah. So we have a lot of Fortune 500 customers that I can't name drop, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but uh, a, a very large company that uh, I can talk about openly is Telus. Telus is a 20 plus billion dollar telecom conglomerate based in Canada, um, okay. and they're a huge partner of ours. We're actually powering, so they're they have multiple different business units. Their roots again are in are in telecom, right? I think of them yeah. as sort of, sort of like the AT and T of, of of Canada, right? Um, but they've since branched out and have various different um, businesses, and they actually have the largest uh, digital food ag business in the world. And oh, wow. we are powering the cold chain portion of that business, which is really nice. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, are there any other interesting like use cases? It doesn't even have to be like a big name or something, but some you know, pick like one or two of the most interesting use cases that you've kind of seen nanotags being deployed with. That's something you can kind of talk about with that. 
Yeah. So I guess what I failed to sort of mention in the beginning was what does the nano tag actually do? You know, I I failed as an interviewer to ask. (laughs) So so I'm glad we're coming full circle back to that. So what is the nano tag? So the nano tag is a temperature monitor and location tracker. So every single nano tag, whether you need temperature or not, does come with a pharmaceutical grade temperature sensor embedded inside. Now, for those uh, customers that don't care at all about temperature, they just ignore that part of the data, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so we have basically, we're completely application agnostic, but we do power a lot of cold chain stuff because of the temperature uh, sensing functionality. That's both in transit cold chain, so supply chain stuff and stationary cold chain. So that's tags inside refrigerators, inside coolers, uh, yeah. warehouses, et cetera, right? Anything. And it's both, actually, I should mention that it's hot and cold temperature monitoring. So okay. we have a, we have a fortune 10 company using nano tags uh, for predictive maintenance purposes, which is really interesting. So they put the tags on motors inside their stores and distribution centers. And the motors are supposed to be running at a certain temperature at all time. When they see the temperature start to spike, then they know that there's a maintenance issue um, with with that motor. It needs more oil or there's something else wrong with it. And so they can send out maintenance people um, to address the issue before the motor breaks down. And if that motor oh. breaks down, everything in the whole DC or, or, or that section of the store stops. So it's a huge, yeah. huge problem. And so we've already prevented something like millions of dollars of, of, uh, of failure from, from occurring with, with the nanotech, which is super interesting because we had no idea that that's how they intended to use the tag until they told us. Yeah, that. yeah. No, we have lots of different temperature sensors and things like that, like in the ecosystem. But that's the first time I think I've heard of something like going the opposite way and, man, you know, like pre- preventative maintenance for like hot temperatures and things like that. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Excited to see more about that. Um, you know, are there any I know you guys are building out, you know, like you said, you're maxed at like um, manufacturing and stuff like that right now. But. Are there major plans on the horizon that you can kind of like tease like or, you know, things you you guys envision doing in the next year, next two years, something like that? Like what what is what's the future look like for nano things, I guess? The future looks like I'm not going to get a lot of sleep. That's what the future looks like. <laughs> we have quite the roadmap and a very aggressive roadmap, as as does, you know, Helium Nova. Right. So, yeah, um, a, a few things that are coming down the pipe very quickly is we are releasing our nanotag real-time API, which it actually isn't available, even though we're selling the real-time nanotag right now. Uh, we sell it sort of as an unlocked uh, device that you need to, you know, we give you the, the, the decoder documentation. You have to basically do all the work to get the, okay. the data off the tag. Um, in yeah. the fu- hopefully in the near future, we'll have an API that basically delivers that data on a silver platter to whatever application um, the customer wants, right? Gotcha. Um, beyond that sort of, uh, here, this is an extreme teaser. Uh, and I'm <laughs> it's sure all right. We like that. Yeah. A bunch of flack for this. Um, but in hopefully by the end of Q1 2023, realistically more like summer of 2023, we will have solved the global roaming issue. So we will have a single SKU, airline approved, all over the world, um, that can work and automatically switch bands across any any LoRa region. Yeah, no, that would that would be amazing to see. That would be awesome. Yes, so, yes. That's my little teaser. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. So, I mean, that means that people will be hearing more from you guys soon sure. <laughs> about that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, Tim, that was, those were all my questions. Do you have anything else you wanted to add at all? I think this was great and a great overview, kind of of what Nano Things is, what you guys do, and where you're headed. No, just uh, if anyone's interested in working with us or, or reaching out, my email is, is tim at nanothingsinc, that's I-N-C dot com. You can also reach out through our website. Uh, check out the website. It's actually going through a lot of changes right now. So you're going to notice things are, are, are changing a lot over the next couple of weeks, but uh, learn a little bit more about what we're doing and, uh, and see if, if the nanotag is, is right for your application or use case. Perfect. I'll drop your email and uh, the website in the video links too, for people who are watching this. So cool. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Oh, well, Tim, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And, you know, everyone stay tuned for more from NanoThings soon. All Thanks. Right. Yep.